spending time with her husband, friends, family, including her 12 grandchildren. In her spare time, she connects and celebrates with the women involved in motorsports, taking you behind the wall about their journey of life, racing, and how they juggle everything to make it all work. Welcome to Racing Girls Rock Podcast. Strap in, window nets up, the pedals are down, and when the green flag drops, we go. Hello, this is Melinda Russell with the International Women's Motorsports Association. And this podcast is brought to you by Racing Junk, one of our partners at the IWMA. And today my guest is Michelle. And Michelle, I met her at PRI. And she lives in Alaska, which is very cool. Uh, She's my first guest from Alaska. So I'm excited to have Michelle on. So welcome to the podcast. Well, thanks. It's great to be here. So, Michelle, tell me, uh, first of all, a little bit about yourself, where you live, you know, what do you do, your family, whatever you'd like to share. Okay. Well, um, I live in Palmer, which is um, just out, uh, outside of Anchorage here in Alaska. Um, it's uh, We just got a house uh, last fall that is right next to the racetrack, so it's uh, very convenient for me. I can walk to work if I want to. Um, I have um, a husband and two kids. My daughter, Morgan, is a uh, senior at the University of Alaska at Fairbanks. Um, she is a petroleum engineer, so I got to brag on her a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then my son, Teddy, uh, turned 10. So um, I've kind of got a, a wide range of, of ages there, but it's kind of it's kind of neat. We've got a couple dogs and um I am currently, um, I own, still own a printing company in Fairbanks, um, which is where I've been living for the past 15 years. And then um, I run the racetrack and then we've got a little Airbnb that we do. So, so you're busy. very busy. Yeah. Yeah. Very busy between printing and <laughs> racing and uh, an Airbnb. I would think an Airbnb would be a lot of work on its own. So that's, that's pretty cool. So the racetrack, I'm intrigued by a racetrack in Alaska. How, what's your season look like? When do you, when do you race? What's your timeline? Um, well, actually, from what I, have, um, I understand, our season is very similar to probably yours and to some of the other uh, northern tracks. We run Mother's Day to Labor Day. So it's about, what is that, four-ish? months or so um and you know as you know racing is kind of a year-round thing anyhow even though i'm not running the events all the time we still have a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we do so um it keeps me pretty busy and um but i I really love what i do so tell me how did you come to run a racetrack well um my Dad, we're originally we're from Wisconsin, and so Dad used to race at Elkhart Lake, and you know back in the day in Road America and stuff. And so he, um, you know, he was kind of always into motorsports, but we were farmers um, originally, and that's how we got to Alaska was through this farming project. And then um, my brother, who is six years older than me, he was racing all the time, and so he started drag racing out here at Alaska Raceway Park in uh, 1986. And so then, you know racing's a family sport so we just kind of grew up in it um and then in the early 90s my parents went in and um, purchased the racetrack with a bunch of other racers from the the gentleman that had um, built it originally and so then our family owned it and then they bought everybody else out a couple years after that and so then we've just been doing it ever since and so I used to race um when I was high school as soon as I got my license I was out at the track and then um, when I got pregnant with my daughter, um, they were like, well, you can't really race anymore, which is stupid in hindsight, but, <laughs> but you know, they would, they, they, you can't race. So, um, so that's when I started working in the tower. And so I was, that was my first year as a tower god was in 1997. So, and I've been, been there ever since. I was going to say, and you've just, all you've done is change jobs or add jobs to your list and you're still there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Very and cool. now we've got, um, so we started with the, um, the drag strip. So it's a quarter mile drag strip. And then in uh, 2016, we opened a third mile NASCAR oval. So now I have two tracks to run. And I don't know a whole lot about circle track racing, but I am learning a lot, um, kind of drinking water from a fire hose. So it's, <laughs> it's a lot of info to learn all at once. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So how many years have you run the circle track? How many years has it been going? Um, this will be the fifth season. Okay. All right. 2020, yeah, year five. Okay. So you're not brand new to it, but again, there's always things that come up that you hadn't expected. Yeah. And it's, it's getting easier. Um, our, uh, you know, I have a, an amazing staff at the track and everybody who's out there really enjoys what they do. And, you know, they're helping me become, you know, a better track operator and my racers are, you know, helping me out. And so it's, it's, it's been good. So about how many cars would you have, on a typical night at either of your tracks? Um, usually the drag strip has got about uh, 60 or 70 that show up. And then the circle track is, let's see, we're at four classes. We're probably about 40 or so over there right now. Um, okay. It, it depends. We've got more cars, but not everybody always shows up at the same time. So Right, right. But those are pretty good numbers, I would think, because... <clears throat> how far away do most of those race racers come from? Are they pretty much local there close or do they have to drive a ways? Um, uh, most of our racers are from uh, here in the Valley, but the, I mean, the, the Valley is um, larger than most States down in the U S. So, um, you know, they'll, they'll typically come from, you know, about an hour away or so. Uh, we've got a lot of racers that come from Anchorage, and that's an hour the other direction. Um, but we do have some dedicated racers that come from Fairbanks, which is six hours away, um, or up from the Kenai Peninsula, which is two or three hours away. Wow. I figured you would have some that would come from a, at least a little bit of a distance away. Yeah. So yeah. Um, tell me what, let's start with the circle track. What, what classes do you run there? Um, so for circle track, we have um, our late model class. We run a legend class, which is actually our largest class right now. We have baby grands. Um, we run a thunder stock class. And then we just added a new class called bomber stock. And that's kind of just kind of the intro class. So we can kind of get people pulling stuff out and getting started. So we'll see how that goes. That should be a popular class because at least here in Michigan, that's, pretty popular, the front wheel drive or four cylinder class, because again, people can get started for not very much money invested and, and it usually goes pretty well. So I'll bet you'll have some success there. So do you have any women that race then, at either track? Um, we do. Um, and I, I forgot to mention, we, we have a couple sprint cars that are coming this year. We're going to have four, four actual sprint car races. Um, and that ties in with the women thing because um, one of our newest sprint car drivers is a 15 year old girl out of Kenai. So um, she's got some big kahunas cause those are some pretty fancy cars. So um, they're loud and squirrely and um, yeah, it's gonna be exciting to watch her race last year. She came out and did it um, twice at the end of the season. So, and she's run dirt for a while. They have a dirt track down in Kenai but she hasn't run the sprint cars before. So. So that's going to be kind of neat. But that's then we have um, our baby grand driver, Tom, is, uh, is kind of a, a very popular lady over at the circle track. And those are our two lady racers over there for now. Okay. But hopefully so. some more are going to get interested, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We'll get <clears throat> so you'll have to connect me to those two gals so we can do a story about them at some point. So yeah, absolutely. So when they told you you couldn't race anymore, not because you were <laughs> pregnant, but after the, <clears throat> it was after you had your daughter, what did that, what did that make you think? It was like, I was, I was sitting here thinking, well, what's that got to do with it? But um, tell me a little bit more about that. 
<laughs> well, the the funny thing is, is okay. So I've got two kids, right? And um, so when when I was pregnant with Morgan, I stopped racing and started working on track. Where she was born in September, so I was a little bit more pregnant. Um, Teddy's birthday is in January um, during the race season, and so um, and I I enjoy what I do. Like I really enjoy racing, but I really love putting the events together and making you know the orchestration of everything, making it all happen. So um, when I was pregnant with Teddy, I had also started um, the roller derby league in Fairbanks. Um, so I was playing roller derby while I was pregnant with Teddy. Um, and I uh, drag raced that season. I won the championship in our open air class. So it, um, I don't have a motorcycle, but I was running a snow machine. And I was like, as long as these leathers fit, I'm gonna keep racing, you know, and so, so I raced the whole season pregnant with him on a snow machine in leathers. And so then when I showed up at the racers banquet, I was all huge, you know, and pregnant. Everybody was like, what? But so it, it's just, you know, the difference 12 years or so makes. So um, it was just, I don't know, back then, I mean, when I was pregnant with Morgan, I was a lot younger and it didn't really, it wasn't a big deal. But now I'm like, that just seems silly. Right. Racing a truck's got to be safer than any. So <laughs> exactly. Probably safer than driving on the road nowadays with people texting and driving. And I yeah. always, I always um, think back to when I talk to women that were, have been in racing for a long time and they say, Oh, I wasn't allowed in the pits. Women were not allowed in the pits. Like what? And, and it's just crazy, but times have really changed. And now we're seeing women do all kinds of jobs in racing which is one of the reasons I wanted to talk with you because you run a racetrack. That's not common. It's mostly men, I think, but it's becoming more common that women are running, you know, because we're organized, mm -hmm. we can handle lots of things, multitasking and, and really it fits a woman's personality, I would think a lot of the time. So um, that's one of the reasons I wanted to interview you on here. What would you say is the hardest thing about your job? Um, probably for me, um, handling my emotions a little bit, because I do tend to get a little bit more, um, emotional about stuff occasionally, you know, um, see, I'm getting been clumped already, <laughs> okay. but, um, it's you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff, yeah, a lot of stuff happens at the track, you know, we've got, um, I, I grew up there and our track is kind of unique because we are the only racetrack in Alaska, pretty much. I mean, we've, there are other racetracks, but, but for us, you know, we're the only drag strip, we're the only NASCAR sanction track, like, and I've grown up there, you know, I know all of these people, they're my uncles and brothers and, and sister, you know, like their family. And I talk about track family all the time, but you know, so stuff happens you know we had a we had a really bad crash um two seasons ago and I thought I lost my driver and it was it still gets me all like it's okay and he's such a jerk about sometimes he, he comes up you know and he gives me a big hug and stuff you know and um he's got they they videotaped it so he's got video of me like crying on the track while we're trying to clean up the mess and stuff and you know, these guys are our family and it's, and just like family, there's some of them that I don't really like very much. And some of them are kind of jerks and, um, you know, so keeping emotions in check has always, you know, been a challenge for me, you know, trying to make sure that, you know, when we're doing driver's meetings and stuff, you know, I'm trying to be a professional and whatever, and not be too much of a, a baby or whatever, but, um, you know, just trying to make sure that, that we're out there and, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing the best job and I, I want to look like I'm tough and this, you know, badass and all this stuff, but I'm kind of sensitive sometimes too. So, you know, and we get, you know, boys get in arguments in the pits and I'll get in an argument with somebody and then I have to like walk away and like cry behind a, you know, a trailer or something. Not that I cry at the racetrack a lot, but you know, I don't want to be out there just, you know, being all super emotional and, you know whatever so yeah and <laughs> when they if they know they can make you cry and it's somebody that maybe you don't get along with that much then they're going to push your buttons 
And so there's a fine balance though, because like you said, yeah. the people that are our race family are sometimes we're closer to them than we are our own family because we spend more time with them or we're mm -hmm. going through a lot of the same experiences together. And our family, if they're not involved in racing, doesn't get that. Now I've been lucky. Um, my family's involved in racing and has been ever since my son uh -huh. was younger. And now my granddaughter, she's 16. She's continuing to race. Her sister used to race. So our family's still very involved, but there's a lot of people that, you know, uh -huh. it's just their little mom, dad, daughter deal. And the rest of the family doesn't get it. And so <clears throat> I always say that I think the racing family, first of all, when I ask people, what is the one thing that you love the most about racing? It's always, almost always, the relationships and the people that they've met. And I know that's going to be what you're going to say as well. Yeah. I can already tell. But then, you know, um, when, when something happens, that's who's there for you. And, and it's a whole different deal. My kids uh -huh. play basketball and baseball and cheerleading. And yeah, we were all friends. And if something had happened to one of the others, you know, we would have been there. But it's not the same as the racing family. You know, sounds like your track has the yeah. same situation. Yeah, and that's that's part of the reason why, I mean, we, my husband's from Fairbanks. And so that's why we were living up in Fairbanks. And, and a couple years ago, um, my mom was kind of sick and, and we were driving back after the races one night you know and we're we're headed back up to Fairbanks and it's a six hour drive and I'm like why are we doing like why are we not here at the track you know and at that time my parents were talking about maybe selling it and stuff and I was like you know I we for me selling the track isn't an option because it changes the relationships for everybody you know and our families run it for a very long time and it, our family is going to continue to run it because I don't want that to change. You know, we sell it to somebody else who comes in and, and it, it just changes everything for everybody who's there. You know, my, my brother and his wife live here at the track too. Um, you know, uh, so, and he races, he's got a funny car, um, that he runs and my husband races and, you know, like our whole, our whole, everybody is here. And so, when we were discussing, you know, my dad turns 80 this month, you know, and it was like, well, what are we going to, you know, they can't run the racetrack forever. And I was like, we've got, we have to come back here and we have to take this over because I can't have this change for everybody, you know? So that's, that's why I do it. I mean, it's not like I'm, you know, making a lot of money and, you know, I could be, I don't know. I don't know what else I do, but you know, it's, it's not, that's not it for me. It's just making sure that all of these people have got this this place to grow up and to raise their kids and for our junior racers to come up and to have that, that place, you know, and it just, it, that's just kind of neat for me. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's, it's the whole tradition thing. So, um, Kalamazoo Speedway is my local track and, um, I've gotten to be really good friends with mm -hmm. Gary that Gary and Donna Howe that own it and they just sold the track. Okay. So now um, there are, nothing's going to change for this year. And, and I think Gary's going to ease us all into the transition with the new owners. And the new owner is going to be great. I have no doubt about it because I know that Gary would be very careful about selling his baby to the right person. And I know that he did. And so I'm excited about that part of it. I know that, you know, with new owners, there's, changes but usually I would hope they'd be for the good but it <clears throat> it is going to be hard at some point when you go to the racetrack and Gary and Donna are not there and somebody else is running the tickets and yeah. the, and the and at some point that happens and in the same like you know we we lost um I lost my son and then we lost his very best friend um two years ago in 2018 one our, our his friend Ben was in a car accident and then my son Ben had a had a tragic we had a tragic loss with him and so you go to the racetrack and you expect to see them walking in the pits or that it's really hard when there's those changes and I understand how you feel about you want it to 
be the same. You want it to be, you don't want somebody to come in and buy it and then close it. You want to make sure that it's going to yeah. be there for the young people coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and we do have, we do have quite a few junior racers over, you know, at the drag strip. We had, um, you know, you had asked about the, the lady racers and, and we actually have quite a few ladies that run over at the, at the drag strip and um, our junior class is predominantly girls um, and they're amazing little drivers. And um, the other summer I had a, like a, I don't know, like an aha moment. We were sitting at the campfire one night, you know, after the races and you know, having beers and stuff and visiting and the, the junior kids came popping over, you know, when they were in hanging out and stuff. And I was like, holy crap, like, this is the, the cycle. Like when, when I was their age, and I was the young kid, and I would come pop out into the fires, you know, and, and there would be the older racers there, you know, and, and the people that we looked up to and stuff, and they were sitting there and having fires. And I was like, Oh my God, now I'm that person, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm the older, the older mentor racer or whatever. And it was just, it just kind of to see how it all circles around. And I don't know, that's neat. It is, it is very neat because really traditionally uh, racing is probably one of the very few sports, if not the only sport where, you know, the dad may have been in it. Now the daughter's in it. You're not going to find that in football or baseball or cheerleading or, you know, maybe basketball is about the only other sport, you know, or track, but, you know, really, yeah. racing is really the one sport I can think of where it is handed down most times from generation to generation. Oh, my grandpa raced, my dad raced, and now I'm racing, or, and now my son is racing. It just seems like it's always, you know, follows down to the next generation. Yep. Yeah, my daughter raced. Um, she had a junior dragster when she was growing up, and she just bought her first car. She got a, an RT Charger, so um, that'll be running at the track this summer. You know, I mean, it's not a race car, but she'll still be racing it. Um, and then, uh, you know, we're we're looking at getting Teddy into racing. He's he's not so much into it yet. We'll see how he, you know, if he enjoys it when he's doing it. But he's already talked about. Well, do I get? to run the racetrack someday and I was like yeah and he's like do I have to buy it and I was like probably not gonna have to buy it I said but you're gonna have to work real hard to get it so yeah. we'll start grooming him <laughs> you know, get, get him get him doing all those little jobs and make him fall in love with it just like the rest of us have so Michelle yeah. tell me about your yeah. like, staff or your people that help support the track with sponsorships you know, share with me some things about that, about your track, anybody that you'd like to mention or, or talk about. Oh my gosh. Um, so like our, our big sponsor that, um, we have a really good partnership with Tesoro, which is, um, now owned by Marathon Corporation, which I think Marathon is, um, they're big. They've got places coast to coast and so so we do a really big promo with them um and they they just uh renewed their contract for this season and so um the end of the year um you know they promote us and stuff during the season but then after uh the first of july um anybody who goes to their gas station and gets eight gallons of gas can bring their receipt in and then they get into the track for free and so it's a, a big promo that they do um, and it, it works out really, really well for all of us. And, um, so we're really proud of that partnership with them. And, um, and then we have, my gosh, we've got so many sponsors, which is, it's fantastic. We got a really good, um, relationship with Odom and Coca-Cola. Um, so we're at Coca-Cola track and we usually give away, um, they help us give away a, a trip for two down to a, either a NASCAR race or an NHRA race, which is kind of neat. Right. Um, you know, some exciting stuff. So, um, and then I don't know, like I could uh, rattle off everybody. Um, we just signed, um, I don't know if, if you had known that or not, but we just uh, switched sanctioning on our drag strip from IHRA to NHRA. Okay. So um, I'm in the process of trying to figure all that stuff out. Um, but that's been really exciting for us. Um, 
just to be able to be more um, West Coast orientated and you know our racers are already talking about going down to Woodburn for the division six races and um you know it's it's just kind of it's neat well we're looking forward to giving away our first wallies this year um and then as far as like staff goes I'm um I'm very very blessed to have um an amazing group of people um our EMT, John, has been working at the racetrack as long as I have. Um, he's His daughter and my daughter are the same age. And so, you know, he he remembers me. Um, so John's been there forever. And his daughter, Kelsey, um, when she started, she started working there as soon as she turned 14. And so she's been working there. Um, gosh, this is coming up on like 10 years now. Um, and then you know, we have, we just have a lot of really cool people that really love what they do. And I'm, I, you know, try to tell them that all the time, like how proud I am of them and how, how happy and honored I am to be working with these people because they don't come, you know, just like me, they don't work there because it's a paycheck, you know, they work there because they love what they do. And I, I can't thank those guys enough because we, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts in the racetrack. I've got like, you know, 40 employees at any given time, you know, and, and so we're all kind of running around and doing our stuff and it just makes, you know, they make me look good because everybody knows what they're doing and everybody's just doing such a great job. And I, I am really, really honored to have that. So, yeah, yeah. you can't do it without those people. And, and again, it's not because of that paycheck because we know they could probably go a lot of other places to work that job during that <laughs> week more, but you, you do it because it it's in your heart and you're passionate about racing and Hey, you know, if you're working there, you get to watch races too, besides getting paid. So I, you know, you look yep. at it, hey, I'm getting paid to watch the races, which is also fun. But um, yeah, I always want, want to have yeah. the, give a shout out to people that work at the track because a lot of times it is a thankless job from the, um, you know, the people that come and watch the races. They're not always as appreciative of the people working there as they should be. And, and so I know that yeah. you do appreciate those people. So I wanted to give you a chance to say something about that. Now I'm interested to say, so your husband and you live six hours away. And you said, we need to move and go run this racetrack. And so what did he have to say about that? Because he obviously had to change jobs or do something different. So how, how did you manage that? Yep. Yeah. Well, the, the thing about it is, you know, I, w I was thinking from the family standpoint, like I, you know, my parents are getting older and they're still, you know, dad is up at, you know, 6 a.m. and he's out there driving the tractor and, and doing all the track prep and stuff every day. And, you know, he says he's the, the janitor now. So, um, you know, mom's still helping out and doing books and stuff like that, you know, but it's, you know, I needed to do this. And so that's what I was thinking of. And at, like, at the same time, you know, he's sitting in there and, you know, we had just finished, it was like Labor Day weekend or something, you know, and we had just finished packing up and, you know, saying bye to everybody. And then, you know, we were headed back to Fairbanks where we're not going to see these people for nine months, you know, and he was like, you know, these are all of our friends. Like, this is our family. Like, why, you know, why are we driving back? So it wasn't just my idea to do it. It was, you know, it was something for him. And at the time, Morgan was um, a senior, junior or senior in, in high school. And so we were like, well, you know, it's going to take, we've got a lot of moving parts in Fairbanks too. So it was like, you know, we'll wait till she finishes because I'm not going to uproot her in the middle of high school. That would be horrible. Um, you know, we got to figure out what we're going to do with with our rental properties and the business. And and um, I've been very, very lucky that the girls that I work with at the printing company are, um, they're just amazing. Um, it's interior graphics and printing PS if anybody wants to check it out. Um, but they uh, they handle everything flawlessly for me they do such an amazing job and they make it easy for me you know when um mom was sick they were 
right there, you know, anything that I needed, they were like, you know, just do it. And they, they operate up there. I do graphics remotely from my office down here, you know, and I go up there every once in a while. And then, um, I'm actually really fortunate that, um, Amanda who works for me is going to be, um, purchasing the business this year. So fingers crossed, we get that closed up before race season starts, but, um, you know, that's, they've enabled me to, to do this, which has been really fantastic. And so, um, you know, and, and even before then, when I was commuting, you know, I would, we opened the circle track in 2016. And so I would, you know, work at the print shop during the week and then hop in my car on, you know, Friday or Thursday night and zoom down here and then run the racetrack for a couple of days and then hop in my car and go back to the print shop. And it's a lot of driving. So, and I love my Camaro, but <laughs> I don't really want to spend you know, that much time on the road with it. So, um, so they've, they've really, really helped and enabled me to come down here and um, Donnie's excited because now, you know, he's right here at the racetrack. He's working on finishing his altered and we're actually in the process of building the um, garage Mahal uh, out in our front yard. Um, Cause he said we needed a shop and I was like, well, if you're going to build a shop, you should make it as big as we can afford to make it. And it's big. It's uh 40 by 60. And then we've got a little 20 by 40 mezzanine up on the top and, you know, but now my truck gets to park inside in the wintertime, which will be nice. So there you go. And I love that your husband's on board and wants to do it. And it's a partnership because that doesn't work either. If one person's going this way and the other person's going the other way, that doesn't work. But you both are on the same path and you're growing the track and you're, you've added the circle track. And so that's growing. So it looks like you're in it for the long haul, which I, I love to see. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So um, tell me, tell me anything else. What have I not asked you about that you're, is unique about having a racetrack in Alaska or just about your track in general? Or, um, you know, tell us a little bit more about exactly where, like, where would they, what's it called? How would somebody be like, hey, I want to go race in Alaska to say that I've done it? So tell us, where is it at, and how could we find you on social media? All those kinds of things. Okay. Well, um, so the racetrack is just outside of Anchorage. Um, so if you come up here, you fly up, uh, come up. Um, you can fly in and, you know, rent a car if you want, race a rental car. Um, you know, I've been, I've been throwing it out there. I'm like, if anybody big wants to come up, um, you know, come up and we'll find you something to race. You know, we've got, we've actually got a couple um, cars on the circle track that are available. If people wanted to come and, and say they raced. Um, we had Kenny Schrader came up two summers ago and he, he raced up here. Um, Perry Patino and uh, Jordan Anderson and Jake Griffin came up last year and raced um, here at the track. So I need to come up with, a, um, I don't know, some sort of cool, like, I raced at Alaska Raceway Park sticker or logo or something. So or the t-shirt. Anybody's got any ideas on? Yeah. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Uh, I went to Alaska Raceway Park and all I got a t-shirt. So right. Um, like I know. Cool. You know, it's kind of neat. Um, like I, you've seen pictures of the track. It is by far, um, and I'm partial because it's my track, but it's the most beautiful racetrack I think ever. We have. Um, when you're going down the drag strip, it looks like you're going to go right into the base of Pioneer Peak and um, off behind the circle track. We've got, we're 10 miles away from the glacier, so you can actually hop on a four-wheeler or a Jeep or whatever and go down there, check the glacier out. There's, you know, eagles and we have moose at the track and fox and, you know, it's, it's very picturesque, but it's also a really amazing um, facility and we're, you know, we work really hard to try to keep it, um, modern and, you know, updated and clean and as nice as we possibly can. So, um, yeah, if, uh, people want to check it out, um, online, our website is raceak.com, nice and short and sweet. Um, our hashtag is raceak, uh, let's see, Twitter and Facebook and 
I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, Instagram, <laughs> um, all those things are at, at Alaska Raceway or at Alaska Raceway Park. Um, on Facebook, if you check that out, I've been doing a kind of a Tuesday tech talk. Um, I started that in January. And so every Tuesday I do a little video and kind of tell people like, you know, we talked about chassis certs and licensing and what's coming up and stuff. So um, we're, we're, we're really active. There's a lot of videos and a lot of pictures and we do a lot of live feeds and stuff like that. So um, we've got a lot of stuff on our social media. So check all that stuff out. Um, and, you know, all my contact info is on there too. So you guys can shoot me an email or give me a call if you shoot me a text, whatever. Um, but yeah, this has been really exciting and um, I really appreciate what you do for motorsports too. Well, I definitely want to put it on my list of places to go because I've never been to Alaska. My parents went to Alaska for um, their an anniversary trip many, many, many years ago. And my mother always said it was the most beautiful place she'd mm -hmm. ever been. So um, Alaska would certainly be on my list of places that I want to and visit, especially when you, I know you have women not only in charge, but also racing there. So that's, that's always a benefit for me. So um, check, check out Alaska Raceway Park. Michelle and her family are the owners. They run the track. You can tell from talking with her or listening to her today that she has definitely got her heart and 100% involved in this track. And that's, that's what has to happen to keep these tracks going and to provide a space for not only people that are older to race, but a place for the younger generation to come and be groomed and learn the proper things about racing and, and just continue the sport because we certainly don't want it to die. And for you to be able to keep that track going mm -hmm. and provide a spot is so important for the people of Alaska because uh, I don't know where else they would go to race. It wouldn't be any place close. And you couldn't probably get your car there very easy. So, um, Michelle, I appreciate what you do and, and your family and all the things that you do to keep racing going. And thank you so much for coming and meeting me at PRI. I really enjoyed meeting you and, and uh, getting to talk to you today. So is there any last words or anything else you'd like to share? Um, I, I do want to give a shout out to um, our, our junior racers that are headed down to the NHRA races in Phoenix. Um, one of our little, uh, you know, if anybody's headed out that way, uh, Shelby Roy is going to be going down. She's one of our, our junior, lady junior drivers. Um, she's out of Seward, which is like three hours south of here. They're super dedicated, but they're packing up all their cars and stuff, and they're headed down to uh, the races down there. And, um, you know, if you see the, the little kids from Alaska, say hi. Um, but thank you very much for, um, for interviewing me and for um, promoting all of the stuff that you do in motorsports. I've, you know, been following you on all your social media and it's not, you know, it's, yes, it's about the ladies that are doing it, but you, you talk about a lot of other really important things too. And um, I really appreciate all of that information that you're providing. And um, I look forward to seeing you at PRI again next year, hopefully. So yeah. it should be good. It should be good. And if you want to come back, I've got a guest room. Okay, well, I'm going to hold you to it because I will probably take you up on the guest room and uh, definitely want to try to put that on my list of places. Yep. To, that would just be way fun to come up there. So, Michelle, good luck this season. Hope you have great weather and that you have good turnouts at all your races. And I'm definitely going to be following what you're doing and, and sharing it to my page so that everybody can keep track of Michelle and the people at Alaska Raceway Park. And so thanks again. Um, enjoy the daylight. I know you said it's getting more, you're getting about seven minutes more every day of daylight. And so, uh, yay. I know that that's, that sunshine yep. is, uh, is a big benefit. We're, we've actually got a little bit of sun in Michigan today, which is pretty unusual too. So, um, but take care and, <laughs> and we'll keep track of you. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Racing Girls Rock Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at International Women's Motorsports Association. 
or on Instagram and Twitter at the IWMA Nation. And if you know someone that should be on our show, drop us an email at IWMA Nation at gmail.com.